It seems like almost every single day that I jump on Twitter, there's a new company that is closing down, another company that is suspending their services, or some company that is having some sort of problem. There's always something going on. This first started back in September of 2023 when my Forex funds out of nowhere shut down. And it looked like the start of 2024 was going to be a little bit more calm, a little bit more quiet. But in fact, the exact opposite has happened. From FTMO no longer accepting new US clients to rumors of MetaQuote suspending their services across a whole bunch of brokers, we need to talk about what's going on in the industry and where I think we're headed from here. Now, we all know the story of my Forex funds all too well, so I'm not going to focus on them in this video. Let's first take a look at true Forex funds. Just a week or so ago, as of this recording, out of nowhere, they suspended all of their services. Now, the reason for suspending their services was because MetaQuote, according to true Forex funds, out of nowhere terminated their licenses so that they could no longer use MT4, MT5. There was no longer a platform for traders to use and trade on. The question, of course, is why would MetaQuote do this? I'm assuming that they were making money with the true Forex funds as they do with all other broker or prop firm or service that uses MetaQuote. So why would they do this? Well, according to true Forex funds directly, it's because they were using a third party software that MetaQuote didn't allow. Now, this raises a huge question third party software. What's going on here? Now, I want to make sure that I'm not misquoting anybody. So the direct quote from True Forex Funds when this happened is that they were using a third party provider for equity synchronization purposes who has allegedly not connected to MetaTrader's client terminal in a way that is fully accepted by MetaQuote. So a third party provider for equity synchronization purposes pretty vague pretty interesting honestly not something we've ever even heard of or looked into at lark we'll get into that now to bring it back to my forex funds i do remember there being something about there being a third party software that was used this does sound quite familiar the question is why is a third party provider or software anything needed whatsoever now i understand that some of these firms my forex funds and true forex funds they have their own in-house liquidity they weren't using and aren't using a third party brokers which i think ultimately to be honest i think is a huge red flag when we work with a third party brokers brokers that we don't own and brokers that we have no say over what they provide specifically we work with aidcap and we work with think markets whatever they're providing to us is exactly what the client provides so if we receive an email from somebody that's saying hey uh, i don't like how my trade was executed i didn't like the spreads at this time or whatever as much as we would love to help, we have zero control over any of this. There's no reason to have a third party software, none of that. And that is the beauty for both firms and for traders of using a third party broker because nothing can be manipulated, nothing can be played with. I'm not saying that's what happened, but a third party software synchronization whatever it is, to me, that raises a red flag. To bring it back to true Forex funds, unfortunately, as of now, as of this recording, their services haven't started up again. They have said that they're working on it. For now, payouts are frozen. So we hope that it gets completely resolved, that traders will receive their payouts, that they'll be back to normal because we're not trying to step on anybody's toes here. At the end of the day, competition is good. Competition improves all of us. But I think that these are some important questions to ask ourselves and to ask the industry as a whole. Moving on to FTMO before true Forex funds and their situation earlier on in the year there was a word that spread out that FTMO was no longer going to be accepting new US clients now existing US clients were able to continue trading receive payouts so on and so forth but new US clients were no longer able to register with FTMO and this was huge news if you look at FTMO's website traffic a large portion of their traffic understandably is from US clients and it's expected that US clients are a huge portion of that FTMO's revenue. So by no means did they take this decision lightly. But the question is, why did they make this decision? Now, I don't want to speculate. Nobody knows except FTMO exactly why they did this. There were, however, some rumblings online that similar to my Forex funds, there was some sort of investigation, maybe investigation isn't the right word, but some US authorities, legal counsel, whatever, was looking into FTMO and so they were just being proactive by no longer as of now offering their services to US clients. However, the second uh, rumbling or potential, there are rumors that MetaQuote could no longer be offering their services to US clients. They might be suspending uh, uh, permanently, temporarily, whatever it is, their services 
to US clients, which means that US traders would no longer be able to use MT4 or MT5. There are alternatives, we will get to that. But overall, that is something we saw and are seeing with FTMO. Now, as I said, US traders for FTMO, I imagine was a huge part of their revenue. There are tons of traders in the US, but at Lark, we have worked closely with US and Canadian legal counsel, and we have seen, our counsel has seen no material change that would no longer allow US traders to use an evaluation firm. So as of now, it is a business as usual. We're always seeing how the industry is changing, but for traders that are impacted due to the FTMO change, there are still plenty of alternatives. It's not a an industry-wide change, it was just specific to FTMO. Moving on to the most recent uh, change and big news in the industry is a funded engineer. Out of nowhere, FPFX, a technology provider, put out a statement saying that they weren't suspending, they were terminating their agreement with Funded Engineer and they would no longer be allowed to use their services. So for a little bit of a backstory or a little bit of context, FPFX is a huge technology provider. They provide back-end technology services to a whole bunch of firms. Now, the reason that FPFX cut them off is because they said that Funded Engineer was committing fraud and they were deceiving the public by faking payouts. To get more specific, FPFX said that via wash trading, a Funded Engineer was making these a fake payout. So they would create an account, they would trade on it, they would try and make a profit. And if they made a profit, then they would approve a payout in the back end system. And then that inflated artificially their payout. And the reason that FPFX said that this is considered fraud in their eyes is because by faking payouts, it impacts the amount of money that funded engineer would end up paying FPFX. And so that's why they cut them off. It looks like funded engineer is going to be back. They're moving over to their own in-house tech. So they'll be back up for traders. But the question is, if a firm has their own technology, their own in-house tech, wouldn't it just make it easier to fake payouts? That's a question that we would like to pose to you guys. Again, we're seeing a lot of talk online of traders being against FPFX, but in my eyes, I think the technology isn't important. What's important is being honest and not faking payouts. But those are only the allegations. It's up for you guys to decide what you think, but that is one of the most recent changes and movements that we're seeing in the industry. Lastly, I want to discuss MetaQuotes because it's something that is still a very much ongoing. It's an ongoing story. So as of this recording this week, the only firm that we have seen no longer be able to offer MT4 and MT5 due to issues with MetaQuotes is Purple Trading. Now, Purple Trading is not a broker that we use at Lark. We use only 8Cap and Think Market. So to be completely Completely transparent we have spoken to both of these brokers very closely and they are very confident in their relationship with the meta quotes their long-standing relationship with meta quotes so none of this none of these stories that we have spoken about have any impact at lark it is business as usual we don't have in-house liquidity we use third-party brokers those brokers, 8Cap and Think Markets, are still confident in what they are able to offer with MetaQuotes. But all that to say, this story with MetaQuotes is still a very much on the move. It's still very much unsettled. Anything could happen as of now. But the good news for U.S. traders, let's imagine a scenario where MetaQuotes does cut off every single U.S. trader out there. There are alternatives. There's DX Trade. There are several other platforms that eventually firms, including us, will onboard, will have available to offer to U.S. traders so it won't be the end of the world. It won't be Armageddon. It's just some growing pains. Okay, now lastly, I want to talk about a little bit of an overview, a little bit of where I think we're going from here. First off, out of all these companies and all these situations mentioned, we do not have a vendetta against anyone. Ultimately, I think competition is great. It's great for this industry. It's great in every industry because it forces everybody to improve. But these are things that traders are concerned about. And so for whatever it's worth, I wanted to share my two cents. Secondly, from everything that we've seen in the industry, it does look like the majority of issues are coming from firms that have in-house liquidity. So that is something to keep in mind. Thirdly, what we've seen with Funded Engineer, it seems like there is now a vendetta against FPFX and there's a huge value being placed on a firm having their own tech, their own in-house tech. Now, there are some firms that are saying that they have that. From what I know, the inner workings of a firm Many of these firms are simply not being honest. Now, let me ask you this. If you're going to start your own firm or your own company, 
In order to take in payments, are you gonna go start your own credit card processing company? No, you're going to use existing technology that is out there. This is both smart from a logistical standpoint and just a business standpoint. You're not going to spin up your own business for every single product and software and service that you need to use. So the main point of what I'm saying here is that there should not be as much of a reliance on a firm's technology as what I am seeing online. The issue at hand isn't the technology. The issue at hand is the honesty. I'll leave it at that. Lastly, what I want to say is that at Lark, we don't focus on what's going to change. We focus on what is always going to stay the same. And that is great support, great trading conditions, great prices, and great evaluations. When things change, we will always adapt. I know as a trader, it is difficult. Things are changing all the time. And really my heart does go out to people that were impacted by my Forex funds, true Forex funds, funded engineer. Traders are putting and investing their hard earned dollars into these challenges. If they pass and they qualify for a payout, they deserve to receive that payout. And so if you are impacted by any of these stories, I do feel for you, but stay the course. The industry is still as a whole very young. And so these are all growing pains. All that to say, when Deal shut off firms back in 2023, we adapted, we quickly found a solution. The same thing is going to happen no matter what happens in the industry. If MetaQuote doesn't want to work with US traders, we'll find a solution. No matter what happens, traders, you have to adapt and we as a firm have to adapt as well. So we are all in this together. I would genuinely I really appreciate to hear your comments down below. Let us know what you think about what's going on in the industry. Is there something we missed, something we overlooked? Is there something we said that you don't agree with? But if you made it this far, we appreciate it. Hang in there, play the long game, keep adapting, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.